Gamma-aminobutyric acid is GABA. Okay? So when we look at this group of neurotransmitters for feeding brain, what we're really looking for again is dopamine is the one that will move me forward and our movement of muscle. Okay? So sometimes even with depression, there's a lack of or a loss of dopamine. A person with Parkinsonism, a lot of time it's not the tremor that they're most concerned about, it's how depressed they feel because their brain also doesn't move forward. Not as it just their inability to move physically, but to mentally, emotionally move forward. Acetylcholine, when we see a lack of acetylcholine, we, we may see stasis in the, the GI system. We may see an imbalance in the sympathetic parasympathetic response. So we might get easy sweating, or we might not have appropriate sweating, so this real dryness, even when I've exerted myself. Serotonin lack, again, may be stimulated by the antidepressives because it keeps it from being resorbed. And then finally, gamma amino butyric acid. Now, again, we've talked about this before. Where do we mostly produce our neurotransmitters? In the gut. Okay? So a healthy GI system is a key to a healthy brain. A healthy gut is actually where we create approximately 96, some studies up to 98% of all our neurotransmitters are created within our GI system. Okay? And a major constituent of that is the healthy probiotics or the bacteria that exist in the gut. And that's why we see more and more advertisement about, oh, this yogurt has this great probiotic. Well, they're finally trying to sell the research behind what we've already known, okay? So for some of you who've been looking at foods as a source of probiotics, we've talked about some of the fermented foods, the cabbages that are fermented that we actually see in the German <laughs> sauerkrauts, the Korean cabbage fermentation that a lot of people have tasted before is kimchi, okay? And those types of things that are actually a fermented food that has a good, healthy probiotic in it. Okay? So using a little bit of those foods with the meal can actually activate and feed this healthy probiotic. Okay? Remember, pro is good, and then bios is life. An antibiotic is against this bios. Right? We want to actually create a good, healthy bacteria. Now, sometimes people have experienced anxiety symptoms after taking antibiotics. Isn't that interesting? There was one fellow that I'm aware of uh, just in the last few months who had diabetes, and then he took around a heavy dose of antibiotics because he had this persistent cough for three months. They gave him the antibiotic treatment, and then his body went into this severe anxiety and started to almost feel this inability to, to move forward. Okay? Lost his, they thought he'd had a stroke, but it was actually, he'd lost this. And once they fed him correctly and got him healthy again, that was, and he got a, a good culture back in his GI system, he started to improve again. Really fascinating. Okay? But again, looking at the whole person and not just the parts. Right? You want to hear the whole person, look at the whole person, and see what's going on. So let's talk about this a little bit more. If we're going to use GABA, a lot of times the person with anxiety, because GABA is the neurotransmitter associated with uh, sexual satisfaction. Okay? So this person will have often low sexuality. They don't want to be around the other person. They feel very distant or very unsatisfied. So that will also often lead to depression. So GABA has a very important role in a sense of fulfillment. All right? Now a lot of young people, as we work especially with the, the children, you'll see a lot of children that have a lack of GABA will actually... Um, be the little kids that have their hands in their pants at night. Okay? 
They don't realize what they're trying to do, but they're actually trying to increase that neurotransmitter to brain. And so that several times we'll see these little kids that come from good families and dad or mom are always saying, get your hands out of fence. Why are you doing that? Why is my kid so concerned about himself? Or we'll actually see even little girls that have the same thing. They'll deal with a lot of anxiety, and what they're actually trying to do is increase the stimulation of this neurotransmitter, release of this neurotransmitter to brain. Okay, please. Actually, I, I work with preschools there a lot, and that's just part of the, the process they do it normally. Almost every child in the preschool, when you went into nap time, the hands would go right down their pants. Do you understand why? You're saying every child has all that? No. <laughs> in a preschool, all... why is a child having that? They're having a separation of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Not every child does that. Okay? There is a discovery. Right. There's a, there is a phase of discovery. But, but that's, that's very short-lived. It's not something that should continue or persist. It's not something that should be a daily nap time experience. When we see that, that's very, very consistent with childhood anxiety. And with a preschool where the children are away from the parent, and away from a family during the day, that's separation anxiety that they're experiencing. So you actually bring up a great point, and that's very, very consistent with that. Okay? Um, in fact, I've seen um, several children where Parents have said, now, this child did this, but this child didn't. Or this child has this just fascination with themselves, and my other child doesn't. Isn't that normal? And the, the reality is it's not. It's something that they're actually using to create a stimulation for brain. Okay? Think back through and see the children that were well-adjusted versus those that had a little bit more of a sense of an anxiety and you'll see that that was consistent with this. Um, have any of you seen that with children? <coughs> have any of you seen where they have a lot of anxiety and noticed that, that type of a correlation? If you've been around a lot of kids you'll notice that and, and I think that's what you're seeing there. Um, because I've seen many times when we actually give this the parent will come back and immediately say wow I thought it was normal acceptable behavior but once we've given them adequate dosing of GABA they don't have that need for a self-stimulation or a... Because even in the psychology books and stuff in my training, all said that's all normal behavior. So. Mm -hmm. hmm. No, it's, it's, it isn't. It isn't. <laughs> no, it's, it's an attempt to create normalcy. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what, when we look at this, nor, what we're really looking for is, again, I've, I've written this before, that type of self-stimulation is a malfunction, okay? But it's using an appropriate neurotransmitter pathway to create or attempt to create a normal function, okay? But in reality, in that case, it's an abnormal function because it should be released on its own, and the gratification should not need to be through that pathway. So if we need to supplement this for a season, you'll actually see the change in the behavior. Okay? Which I think is really fascinating. Really fascinating, especially when we consistently see it. And you'll actually see um, little children that have fears <coughs> of the dark, that have the anxiety. You'll see children who have... Um, the real anxiety with bedtime and bedwetting, different presentations of that, and when we can balance the GABA levels in their brain, you'll see that they calm down significantly. Now that's different than night terrors, because night terrors, if you see the child that's wakening and they're screaming in terror and they have these, not just nightmares, but night terrors, that's a serotonin lack, okay, so that's different. When a child awakens with the night terrors, that's actually a lack of serotonin, so we'll give something else, which in that case is a different discussion. But just for, so you're, for your information, uh, we'll give 300 milligrams of 5-HTP to help to calm that. And that, that's very, very effective. So our goal again is to stimulate this pathway or feed the pathway 
through this appropriate pathway rather than the backdoor pathway, if you will, okay? And restore then a normal function of the GI and the brain, okay? Any question there? Okay. Ashley, could you grab for us Gaptone Active and then checks? And let me just show a couple of products then that we use consistently to help to activate this type of a pathway. And just yeah. give people. Gab a totally changed Katie. Yeah. I mean, that was, she was a prime example of that. Okay. With her sleep and stuff. Sure. So here we have an example.